Please take a moment to read this disclaimer. Welcome to Zen HVAC, micro training video series. What you need to know, when you need to know it, in 10 minutes or less, guaranteed. This episode, checking pump performance, the deadhead check, ominous sounding. You became an expert at calculating water flow after watching our calculating water flow using a pump curve video. But how do you know the pump is actually working correctly? And did you know a pump can lie? It's true. How can a pump lie? Well, let's see. Worn impeller, trimmed impeller, the wrong size. If the cut water is worn or broken, if the wear ring is worn, or if the motor is not turning up to speed. All of these will throw the pump curve calculations off and they'll even lower your IQ. But how? Simple. If your flow calculations are wrong, you're going to look really stupid. First, you're going to need a couple of items. One, an accurate water pressure gauge with a short length of hose. And two, the pump curve for the pump you're working with. Let's get started. Step one, we're going to go to the pump we're working on and we're going to record the data off the information plate. Manufacturer, model number, RPM, the impeller size, and the horsepower. Step two, we're going to find the pump performance curve. It's public information. You can call the pump manufacturer or look it up online. They'll get you the pump curve. Next step, we're actually going to go to the mechanical room. We're going to go to our pump and we are going to shut the discharge valve slowly while the pump is running. First, we're going to mark the position it was in before we closed it because we want to return it to that position when we're done. Measure the suction and discharge pressures using one gauge, not the gauges that have been bouncing around on that pump for the past decade. Take those off, use one gauge, use a piece of hose, hold the gauge at the same height. First, the discharge. In this example, we've got about 36 PSI. Write it down. Now, move the hose over to the suction, record it. We've got about 22 PSI. Write it down. Step five. We're going to immediately go back and open the discharge valve to the original position. Do not leave the pump deadheaded. Reopen the valve. Step six. If the suction was a positive pressure, we're going to subtract it from the discharge. If it was a negative pressure, we're going to add it. In our case, it was a positive, so we're going to subtract it. So we'll 22 from 36 is 14 PSI. Write it down. Now we have to convert PSI to feet of head. We do that by multiplying it by 2.31. So 14 times 2.31 equals, drum roll, 32.34. We'll call it 32. Step 8. We're going to find 32 on our pump curve. Here's our pump curve. We find 32 on the left-hand column where it says pressure in feet of head, and it is between 24 and 36. There's the green dot. We draw a line over till it meets our impeller diameter, which was 4.75, and we track down and zero flow. That's perfect because the valve's shut. It's not moving any water. It should be zero flow. What if it was reading something else? See, this is a good situation, the green. But what if we had a different reading? Say we had 24 feet of head. We draw an arrow over till it hits the 4.75 pump curve, draw an arrow down, and we're almost doing 160 GPM. Well, how can that be if the valve is shut? This is an indication that your pump reading is off. Either the impeller is worn, the cut water is broken, wear ring is off, motor speed is down. You can now confirm centrifugal pump integrity. Wrench drop. Let's look at some points to remember. One, close the discharge valve only and do it slowly, marking its original setting. 
2. Be sure you're using the correct performance curve for the pump you're working with. 3. Use one gauge holding it at the same height for all readings. It makes a difference. 4. If the suction pressure is positive, subtract it from the head. If it's negative, add it. 5. Open the discharge valve slowly to its original position as soon as you get the pressures. Do not leave the pump deadheaded. It will damage the pump. 6. The deadhead pressure should line up with zero flow if the pump is operating properly. 7. Causes of incorrect readings would be the motor not running up to speed, the impeller is worn or it's the wrong size, the wear ring is worn, or the cut water is compromised. Let us know what you think, let us know how we can improve it, and more importantly, let us know what you'd like to see next. Thank you, thank you for watching.